we will find angle between tangents at the point of intersection when exponential functions are given to us in this particular video. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos and posting excellent suggestions. Here is a question from one of our subscribers who wants to understand how do we find angle between two tangents. That is interesting. We will discuss it at length in this particular video with the help of exponential functions. So the question for you here is. To find the angle between tangents, the question is, find angle between the tangents to the curve f of x equals to 3 e to the power of minus x and g of x equals to 2 plus e to the power of x at the point of their intersection. So let me rewrite these two equations, which is f of x equals to 3 e to the power of minus x and g of x equals to 2 plus e to the power of x. We need to find the angle between the tangents at the point of intersection. So that means what all should we do in this? Well, first is we should visualize. Visualize basically means we need to graph. both f of x and g of x and then we have to find the point of intersection and then we have to find the derivatives at point of intersection right and then how do you find the angle which tangent makes with each other and then we'll figure out the angle concepts Now, these concepts could be new for some students, so I like you to carefully understand the video. Well, you can always pause the video and answer the questions. In case you want to learn from me, you can send an email on the address given. Most of my students are on top of their class getting awards and scholarships like Akshay after attending university. The winner of this year's Certificate of Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandivan. Great. Our student, Akshit, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulik Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes and excel. Now, let us try to do all these things one by one. We'll begin with sketching graph of these functions and having an idea of what we are supposed to do. So, let's see how do we sketch these functions. We know both of them will be positive. So, I have made a graph like this. Let us begin with the first one which is f of x equals to 3 e to the power of minus x. Correct. So, minus x means it will be dropping, right? Decay function, right? 3 means the y-intercept will be at 3, right? So, I could graph it approximately like this. And clearly, this point will be at 3, correct? You can substitute 0 here. For example, what do you get? 3 e to the power of minus 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1 and you do get 3. 
And since the exponent is negative, it's kind of a decay. And we know the horizontal asymptote should be x-axis, right? So that is your x-axis and this is y-axis. Make sense? Now, let us try to sketch the other function, which is g of x equals to 2 plus e to the power of x. Now, as soon as I have 2 here, it means horizontal asymptote is 2, right? The whole graph shifts 2 units up. So, the whole graph shifts 2 units up, it could be something like this. So, this is the horizontal asymptote for the second graph and it is increasing, right? You can say g of 0 will be what? 2 plus e to the power of 0, which is also 3. So, from the graph itself, we got the point of intersection. Well, lucky, right? So, let me sketch this graph. Uh, it should go through 3 itself. So, so that becomes g of x. Perfect. So, I hope so far, no problems, right? So, we have the graphs. This is actually a critical part. And fortunately for us, we got the point of intersection also. And the point of intersection is what? We'll refer to this as POI, point of intersection. And this, as you can see here, is the y-intercept, which is 0, 3. Clear? So, we have visualized what it is like the graphs and point of intersection. But the real question is, find angle between the tangents to the two curves. So, so the two curves, one is rising, one is falling. So, the tangents will be, uh, let's try to sketch them also to get an idea how the tangents are going to look like. Okay. So, let's uh, draw the tangent. For one of them first, let's say g of x, it should be kind of like this, right? So, so that is the tangent at g of x, right? And then now, we should also sketch the tangent at The other function, which is uh, f of x, okay, so, so that will be falling, correct? Like this, okay, makes sense? So, we have the two tangents and the question is to find the angle between them. So, we need to find this particular angle between the two tangents. Is that clear to you? Right? So, let's call this angle as theta. That is the question for you. So, I hope you have understood the question. You can now pause the video and answer. Perfect? So, let's begin with our solution. We will actually find the point of intersection algebraically also. This, we were lucky that we could see it on the graph. But, you know, sometimes it could be some other point. You should at least have an idea of how do we figure this out, right? But I hope this figure clearly tells you, gives you a visual idea of what we are getting into, right? Okay. So, so we have this figure here. This is an accurate graph drawn on graphing calculators. Okay. We have used decimals for this particular graph. Now, when I say we want to find point of intersection, that means this particular point, right, where f of x is actually equal to g of x. That is what we mean. f of x is 3 e to the power of minus x and g of x is 2 plus e to the power of x. Well, that really means 3 over e to the power of x, right, minus power, 2 plus e to the power of x. We can multiply both sides by e to the power of x, so what we get is 3 equals to 2 e to the power of x plus e to the power of x times e to the power of x, right. 
Now, we can bring the terms on one side, 0 equals 2, 2 e to the power of x plus e to the power of 2x, and there we go, minus 3. Rearrange them. We should always write with highest power first. Okay, makes sense. Now, how can we solve this? You see, it looks like a quadratic equation, correct? Since it looks like a quadratic equation, we can factor it. By now, you are experts in factoring, so you can easily do it. We are looking for a product of minus 3, sum of 2. That is 3 times minus 1, right? So, we could write this as e to the power of x plus 3 times e to the power of x minus 1, correct? Now, these are the two factors, and if they have to be 0, then either e to the power of x is equals to minus 3, but e to the power of x, you know, cannot be minus 3. So, so the only valid solution is this one, correct? So, this gives us a solution as e to the power of x is equal to 1, and that gives you x as equal to 0, clear? And therefore, we get this point in this particular case. And of course, when I substitute x as 0 in any one of these equations as we did earlier, we know f of 0 is what? 3 e to the power of 0, which is 3. And therefore, the coordinate points are 0 and 3 for us. Correct. So this is the point of intersection. We'll call it p. So I'm calling this point as p. Perfect. So, we have done the first part of finding the point of intersection, which we also visualized earlier. Since we need to find now the angle between the tangents to the curve, we need to find the slope. Correct. So, let's move on and find the slope of each graph at the point of intersection, which for us is 3, and we have labeled this point as P. Correct. So, so f of x is given to us as equal to 3 e to the power of minus x. So, the derivative of this function will be what? 3 e to the power of minus x times the derivative of new, this exponent, which is minus 1. So, I could write this as minus 3 e to the power of minus x. Clear? Since the point of interest is p, which is 0, x value, 3y value. So, the derivative at x equals to 0 will be minus 3 e to the power of minus 0, which is minus 3. So, we know that the slope of this particular line, which was for the decay function, this particular line we are working on is at 0 equals to minus 3. Is that clear to you? Now, let us also find the slope of the second line. We can do it here itself. So, g of x is equal to 2 plus e to the power of x, and so g prime x, or derivative, 2 is a constant, so we get e to the power of x, and at 0, we get e to the power of 0, which is 1. So, we have the slope of this at point p as equal to 1. Perfect. Now, these slopes and angle, how are they related? This is a very big question to be asked. So, the key here is that slopes are same as tan of theta, right? So, what is slope after all? So, let's look into this particular line making the right triangle. Do you see this? Right. Now, when I say the slope is 1, that means rise over run is 1, right? This is, both are equal. Do you see that? Rise over run is 1. And from rise over run, we can find this particular angle. Let us say this angle is angle A, right? Let's call this as point A. And so, we can say that angle A will be equals to what? Well, we can relate it with tan A, right? So, tan of A will be equal to the slope. 
which is equal to 1. So, tan is 1 for 45 degrees. We can say angle A is equal to tan inverse of 1 and that is equal to 45 degrees. Well, in calculus, normally you should be checking all these values for radians. However, in this question, uh, we will stick to degrees. Okay, we found the derivative. We are now finding this angle A. Does this make sense to you? Right. Now, we got the angle A for g of x, right? This is what the function tangent, which is g prime x analyzed, gives you. So, what we learned here is that the slope and tan theta are related. Now, let us do for the second function, which is what? Well, the second one is f of x for you, minus 3 is the slope. So, we can say tan of b is equal to minus 3. So, this is this angle, right? Angle which the triangle makes with the x-axis. So, this is our angle b. Okay, the point we'll call as B and then this angle. It is an obtuse angle. Makes sense because tan of B is negative, right? So, it is in quadrant 2. So, so angle B is equal to tan inverse of minus 3. Let's use the calculator to find this particular angle. I have set the calculator to degrees and rounded the figure to one decimal place. I get... 108.4 degrees. So, so, we got this angle B as 108.4 degrees. Now, can you find the angle between the two tangents? That is the question, correct? So, so it has become easy. You can actually pause the video and answer this particular question. Now, here is uh, what we have derived so far. Let us review. We found that the point of intersection is at 0, we both the graphs intersect. We also related the angles which the tangents make with the horizontal x-axis, right? The angles which you are talking about are angle A and angle B. So, we are saying that the angle A is 45 degrees and angle B is 108.4 degrees. It's an obtuse angle, you can see. We derived this angle from the concept that tan theta is equal to slope m, right? So, that is rise over run is tan theta and slope is change in y and change in x, the same thing, right? Now, how do you get the angle? between the tangents, which is of our prime interest. Find angle between the tangents of the curves. Now, you remember the external theorem, external angle? So, external angle is equal to sum of remote interior angle. Yes, you can do with that or you can find this angle as 180 minus B and then sum of these angles as 180, you will get the angle required and we are calling this angle as theta. We will use the external angle theorem. So, we know that angle B is equal to angle A plus the angle which we want to find perfect. So, theta is basically equal to difference of angle B and angle A. Perfect. That is how you find the angle between the tangents at the point of intersection for different curves. So, let's substitute the values. We get 108.4 minus 45 degrees. Okay. To get our answer, which is to one decimal place, I am writing 4 here and from 8 take away 5 is 3. And 9 take away 4 is 10 take away 4 is 6. So, we get 63.4 degrees as our answer. 
So, we found that the angle between the curves is 63.4 degrees. Right. Does it make sense to you? So, that is how we will actually solve this particular question. Perfect. So, here are all the calculations which we did in a couple of pages to explain all the concepts. So, as you can see, we began with equating the two functions, which is f of x is equal to g of x, right? So, we equated both the functions to find the point of intersection and since the only valid value is for x equals to 0, so that was the only solution. We had the extraneous root for e to the power of x plus 3 and therefore, we got the point of intersection as 0 and 3. Now, at this point of intersection, we found the derivatives. So, the derivative for one of the graphs was minus 3. Since the derivative also relates to the angle, so we related the angle. In this case, I have labeled it differently by A on the other side. So, we got the obtuse angle is 108. So, A and B points are taken, uh, swapped in my case. And for G of X, when we found the derivative, it came to be 1. So, the angle B was 45. And the difference between these two angles is the solution. Perfect. So, that is how we are going to solve a question like this. I hope that makes sense, right? Feel free to write your comments and suggestions. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. And in case you want to learn directly from me, you can always send an email to the address given. And understand the concepts. Thanks for your time and all the best.